Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and today Civilization is a game with what I would call an oversight. You see, we're playing Chin the Unifier, who has all the usual bonuses you would expect from a China Civ. Eurekas and Inspirations provide 50% of civics and technologies instead of 40%. When you complete a wonder, you receive a random Eureka and Inspiration from the era of the wonder, if available. We've got the Crouching Tiger, which is a Chinese unique medieval era unit. Ranged strength, rather high, but a range of only one. And then you've got the Great Wall, which provides you with gold. It acts as a force. It gives you tourism and culture as you advance through the tech tree. But you've got this very interesting ability right here called the 36 Stratagems. Melee units receive the Convert Barbarian action. This action converts Barbarian units into your units, but it removes the melee unit. This was a very interesting ability at first glance because, you know, Every now and again, you'll be in a situation where you'll be standing next to an enemy barbarian and you can like, maybe you could trade a warrior for like a warrior and a spearman or like a slinger and a spearman. You know, some kind of uh, positive value trade could be made there quite easily in most of your games. Now, the oversight is that when you're playing in the zombies mode, zombies count as barbarians and then the extra oversight is that zombies can then go on to claim other units <laughs> so i've just traded my initial warrior for a zombie oh my god this is going to be one of the most fun games of civ i've ever played my units are essentially a plague upon the world it is incredible i cannot wait to show it off it's very very simple we just use this zombie to convert barbarians and then this warrior is ours and oh we have control of this this clan right now this clan belongs to me and we just got another warrior that we can send off in another direction to find more things to capture so let's go ahead and raid this clan this will make a unit spawn it'll kick us out of the thing we might be able to hire a unit and then we might be able to use the spread to capture two units and then by capturing two units we could potentially uh, have an exponentially expanding army if we hit the right notes here it might not happen it could just as easily happen and in fact it did just happen we can step over here convert barbarians and now we're up two units <laughs> Now, to be fair, the Okichita can't convert, but it can explore and learn more about the world for me. Now, the only thing about this is that it is slightly RNG. We may never find enough barbs to make this work, but we do have to try at the very least. So we've managed to pop out a builder and a couple of warriors in my capital, and I've sent those guys off to try to find barb camps for us to control. The potential exists for these barb camps to pop off and go completely crazy. And I've just decided to do essentially a tall build uh, in this particular game. While it is quite optimal to expand as much as possible, I decided to go two warriors, a builder and a monument here. And I think this build has potential to be interesting at the very least. The big downside being, of course, if the AI does declare war on me here, um, I'll be in bad shape. Let's take a GOG and urban planning. We don't care too much about getting a Pantheon here. We would rather just get uh, some extra warriors out and potentially go uh, maybe extract some value in a war with England. Okay, England has declared war on us, as was kind of expected here. And what we want to do is to try to protect ourselves by spamming warriors and just flooding our tiles with warriors. There's a bit of an opportunity cost here for us, which I don't love, because I would much rather be building my campus stuff. But as long as we can clog for long enough, we'll be fine. Alrighty, so I'm gonna step you to the right. You're clogging. You're not quite ready to push. I wonder if we can get this kill. Yes, we can. Okay, so we're, we're holding quite well. The clog is well and truly underway. We're continuing to raid this clan over here. We've almost got 200 gold in the bank. We won't be using that to buy units. We'll probably use that to buy a granary to get growth growing really quickly. And then we'll use a slinger in the capital tile to fight. Ooh, if only I could get to the right tile, I could duplicate my warrior right now, but I'm just going to take a one warrior conversion to get control of the camp again. I'd like to build a campus, but it's not as simple as just building a campus because I also need to think about when I'm going to get Oxford University. If I'm going for a tall build, Oxford University is incredibly important uh, for the 20% science in this city. Another really important part of a tall build is to get the uh, Apadana. So I need to think about where that's going to go. So Apadana uh, goes next to my capital. I guess 
That tile right there can do it. My theater square can dress off that. I think my campus is going to go down here to the south and we can probably make an attempt on both the Great Library and the Oxford Un University down here. Now, ideally, I think I would put my city over here. Um, well, actually, I think I would rather put my campus here because that's a guaranteed plus four for the majority of the game. And then we can try to maybe squeeze in Oxford and the Great Library there. I don't want to see any comments saying potato doing a tall build copium. Listen, this will be the tallest build, okay? <laughs> it will be. So I think the thing to do would be to get a builder, switch away from state workforce to foreign trade, get my builder down to this tile uh, while we eke out a quick settler here. Because we should, we should be more or less defended here. This is like completely within the realm of acceptable levels of unit construction. I mean, I'm annoyed that my stone got destroyed, but we should be fine there. My slinger is going to attack and potentially level up here, and then my warrior should be able to get a good hit. Excellent. So we've well defended ourselves. I'm going to sell off some horses so that I can buy tiles in my capital. In particular, I would like to buy these two. So I need a little bit more cash. I'll sell off my last horses again. It's the advantage of having like a really, really early horse tile. It really makes a difference. My slinger is going to take the garrison promotion. This will allow it to attack like a archer, even though it is only a slinger, because the plus 10 combat strength gives it 25... Uh, strength so capital i would consider to be very well defended now i wouldn't call it impenetrable but i would call it defended i've had too many games recently where i just the optimal play was to just like immediately counterattack the ai and do like insane amounts of damage um and then like capture their entire society and you know do all that stuff so i moved this warrior from this hill to here to zone and control this warrior because i want to chop this tile and if i chop this tile this warrior would be able to step and then kill my my guy but if i move this warrior to here he zone and controls this tile this warrior steps gets zone and controlled and then my builder is safe so if you're wondering about the specific little maneuver I did there. Um, that should explain it. Now, one important factor that we need to consider is because our Oxford University is potentially going on this tile, we cannot settle adjacent to this tile because we want our capital to build the Oxford. So we want, ideally, the next city that I would try to settle would be this city next to these horses, because if I got a second copy of horses up, it would actually really op open up my eco economic situation. However, because of the war situation, I'm going to have to settle down to the south. I'm also going to get started on the campus. The I have to get my campuses built ASAP. I have to get my districts built. When you're playing a tall build, the most important thing to do is to get your districts built and the buildings inside those districts built ASAP. Early builders are also extremely valuable in a tall build. I could step forward and attack here to kill. I'm not going to. I will attack this warrior though, because partially for the experience, partially just to lower his health and make him feel less safe. There is a zombie in my capital, which I don't love. Now I have a curious question. If I take control of the zombie, do I get the mutagen strength? For now, we'll stay fortified. Also, having a tall empire is a little bit more defensible against zombies. That's the other nice thing. Thankfully, I managed to pick up a little bit of faith from a tribal village down here, which has led to me being able to make a uh, pantheon. I'm trying to move my settler out of the vision range of this barbarian scout, so the scout will maybe acquire a different target. That's my hope. And then that this warrior will like push it to the east or something. In terms of this, I like the idea of God of Craftsman here. Production and faith from improved strategic resources could be really handy. Culture from pastors would be useful, but I think I really need the um, I need a production gain, especially because I'm not going to go for a holy site or any, anything faith-based this game. So having a tiny bit of passive faith gain actually kind of suits me really, really well. Somehow I haven't managed to kill a unit with a slinger, which is kind of baffling considering how many times I've shot units with this slinger. I wonder if Eleanor is looking for peace now. She will take peace. Okay, that's good. It means I don't have to try and defend, defend myself anymore um, perfectly. And we can have a little bit of freedom. I really need to get the granary to allow the city to continue to grow. We do have a barb camp here. Uh, I'm going to convert so that I can pillage this. We got our very first campus with plus three era score. So why don't you come in here and we are just going to disperse this clan for the two era score. You are now going to convert this guy and I might disperse this for the two era score. Settle you in place and becomes the first settlement on Atlantica. I need a little bit more era score. I need to find where I can get that era score. Let me have a little think about that. Let's get our library up. I really need the granary too. I think the granary might actually be more important than the library because we want to work more tiles. I was really hoping to get Hypatia, but it looks like I might not be able to grab her this game. Not the end of the world. My library will be early enough to where I'll learn a lot. We don't have amazing campuses in our second city, but we will be going library first. Um, we would really like a builder. Maybe the builder would be the better acceleration. Builder into monument. I would love a golden age here if I could get it, but um, unfortunately, I can't quite get masonry fast enough to build a great wall. And then I would still need plus one era score. 
So I won't be able to secure a Golden Age this game. And so I won't bother dispersing this clan unless I know I can get a Golden Age off of it. There's no reason not to. We just completed Early Empire and we're about to complete State Workforce and then we're a few turns away from Political Philosophy. So our early game is going to open up quite a lot here. Part of playing a tall build is absolutely rushing Pingala. So I will be going Pingala in my capital. He's one of the most important key components of a tall build. We also did just get State Workforce giving us access to our Government Plaza and another Governor title, which will allow us to plug in Connoisseur on Pingala. I need to get my Government Plaza down. I would like to squeak out one more settler before I go for another district, however. I also need to get the light granary in here. I think I'm going to very quickly get my final two settlers before I continue to advance. Um, and so to get those final two settlers, I'm going to plug in the settler production card as well as the barbarian combat card. And this will probably be a four city build. Four cities are very optimal because it's the maximum number of cities that can be hit by things like luxuries and national parks. We did just unlock masonry, which is perfect. We are going to go ahead and get a plantation here to give us extra gold per turn. The GPT will serve us very well. We're going to make a dedication. I think free inquiry is the easiest one. You get one error score each time you trigger a Eureka. You can trigger a lot of Eurekas. You gain one error score for building a building that provides science yields. We are going to be building campuses. Otherwise, this is like Pembershire Voice is all right. It's like the second rung. Uh, monumentality is like the worse and Exodus is the best if you get a religion basically. I think it should be two era, two era score every time you build a district. That seems like a little bit more reasonable. So the three most important districts for me this game are campuses, theater squares and commercial hubs. That's going to be what fuels my economy and they are going to be in that order. Let us get to work on bronze working I guess. I don't have any naked hills that I care if iron appears on. So I'm willing to live with that. I don't like how undefended I am against Nubia potentially. I don't know how he managed to clear this barb camp with me standing on it. This is like such a bullshit game mechanic that if an AI unit has high enough movement, which this unit does, they can move onto the tile you're standing on and clear the barb camp you're standing on. It's like such BS. Really, really infuriating game mechanic. In fact, please make a clip of this and send it to the developer and like tell them to please fix that. Because that, that is, it's it's the most infuriating thing in save right now, in my opinion. It is the most infuriating thing. Let's go ahead and sell off our horses we don't need horses so i could just get rid of them get 12 gold per turn that'll work really nicely for me i'm hoping that this zombie will attack my warrior and then i can get a double conversion unfortunately the city state managed to clear the the clan haven't really, really been able to levy any units from the barb clans which is slightly unfortunate but we are on par with the ai in terms of science and culture right now which i'm quite happy about i do have a curious question as to like is it worth it to convert zombies do i get the mutagen strength i do get the mutagen strength so that's uh, that's quite valuable actually let's use the slinger to escort this direction how much is it for me to purchase a trader right now i am not sure but i would like to get started on currency and i would like to buy a trader in the near future so we'll we'll do both of those things a government plaza is for sure going here on this rice tile that way it can provide adjacency bonus to a whole bunch of things it would have been nice to have gotten oracle however because the war was declared on me i wasn't really able to take that opportunity it's fine we will get some it would have been really nice to get hypatia like hypatia would have been game defining for me plus one science per city 50 percent more efficient libraries would have been really nice nothing i could do about it i need to explore and i need to find more city states and i need to be better um if i buy if i buy this tile i won't be able to buy a trader i'll have to move away from research and currency and instead start researching something simpler like archery and horseback riding. I would like to build two more art slingers before I do that. I, basically, what I'm trying to do is optimize here for triggering these Eurekas. So probably the best thing to do is to put a couple turns into all these techs and see if I can hit those Eurekas. Um, let's go ahead and pop in here. I will buy this tile and I'm going to chop this woods because I want to know uh, what love is. No, I want to hit I want to hit the settler timing for hitting political political philosophy and starting Apadana. I would also like to buy another builder. So I may look to sell things. Don't think I can sell this luxury, unfortunately, because we are neutral on amenities, unless there's luxuries for sale, which there is not. Um, so I am going to go ahead and just sell off my open borders to try and acquire as much gold as possible. And maybe we can squeeze out a builder here. It's all dependent on what we can do. My troops are merely passing by, like, I don't understand her fury. Also, what is the settling direction? She like settled Moreau and then literally walked all the way over here for Kerma. Little crazy, if you ask me. So the big thing about tall builds is that we're always looking to get value now to make value happen later. Uh, so Classical Republic is like the classic tall thing, but since we're going to be building a wonder, I am going to go for autocracy here. I'm going to keep settler production in for now, right? Yeah, I'll keep settler production in for just a couple turns, plus one production per turn. Uh, I'll get influence, and then in a moment, I'll switch to Corvi. Now, I need a cheap things. We'll get mysticism, that'll get me an envoy, and then I can switch to military tradition. It would be really nice if we could get Magnus 
and to get a Colosseum here, that would be game defining for a tall build. Things like Colosseum are game defining for a tall build, in my opinion. We managed to grab Mysticism, which is perfect. We do have an Envoy now to spend. Um, of all of these, none of them really stand out to me. Normally, I don't like settle next to a volcano this close to my capital city, but I am very limited on settlement locations around this lake. So I'm just going to take what I can get here. Uh, so for sure, we want to kind of start laying out potential district locations. This is Beijing's geothermal uh, campus. Then there is something to be said of like potentially a theater square here. Although, would the theater square be better there? It could be better there. There will be a theater square here from this city. Ideally, my capital city would build Broadway, I think, here. Broadway for the 20% culture in this city be ideal. Uh, and then there's actually a pretty decent commercial hub location. And then you've got a pretty good campus right there, plus two, but we'll have to kind of, we'll, 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 we'll workshop this, right? We're kind of making use of the government plaza to a reasonable degree. One thing we should absolutely do is buy this tile and place your campus. That way we secure its price. We're going to go for drama and poetry. Don't know how much longer I can delay my granary. I need to, I, I, need, I need my granary yesterday, to be honest with you. Um, because I need to start placing and building districts. So we're just going to have to like prioritize and sacrifice. But if we can get Apadana, it's a game changer for us here. And the reason that it's a game changer is because it gives us two, two slots for great works of writing, which is potentially eight culture in the capital. Sorry, four culture in the capital for great writing slots. Let's go ahead and settle in place. And we settled on a nice lake. Excellent. Um, Wuhan is going to go straight for a builder as well. We need to get these things like horses online. And then the final settler is going to get escorted over to here while the slinger heads back to the capital. Now this is a 25 turn Apadana, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to swoop into military tradition. Uh, we've got a four population capital. Let's do a search for Apadana. Nobody is building it to my knowledge. So let's place the government plaza in the capital. We'll get started on the granary because we need to get to seven population ASAP and then we'll get started on the Apadana. That's just kind of like, unfortunately, the necessary um, set of things that we have to do. Military tradition is complete. We can take out settler card. We'll never need it again. We could plug in Core V. Build, uh, I feel like Ilkum could serve us really well here, but I got to do Core V because um, I want to get that wonder faster when we started here. And the main goal with the builder in Beijing is to improve the city's tiles to give the city temple. Um, so building builders before feudalism is really low value. However, it does give you a temple. And what that means is basically you're losing value because you're making your builders more expensive. However, you're getting tempo because you're making your empire better right now. So there's kind of a, there's upsides and downsides to it. And we're going, tall builds are what I consider to be tempo based plays where you have to make things happen really early into the game to, uh, to win. So that's why we're going fast granary and fast builders. I could harvest this and then put a mine in its place. Um, but I think harvesting is more of a wide build. Our builder charge count is going to be very limited because our construction, our production is going to be very limited. So we have to try to optimize for high quality of our tiles. And this is just like, this is just like, this is like exactly the kind of thing that you want to look for when you're playing Chin. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at that. And I still have a charge because I got an immortal. Look at that. That is a huge free army which means we don't have to build an army to defend ourselves. We could just walk these guys back home. We can fight Singapore. We could do whatever we like. So it is quite important that this city is in range to make use of this. On the citrus, it doesn't feel terrible here. It does get me access to another luxury immediately. So unfortunately, Apadana was just taken. Now, Apadana is important, but not the be all end all of our build. We can live without Apadana. And the fact that we're not getting Apadana speeds up other parts of our build. Like, for example, getting our government plaza to promote Pingala. So while I don't like that, I don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, we would also like to get our water mill, although that one is less important. We have things to build, so we don't need the water mill immediately. Uh, and then we're going to get another Giga Chad conversion here. Oh, baby. Look at this positive net value from this ability. Really, really high utility. We're going to go ahead and build a pasture here. And for the first time in my life, I'm actually playing with the Builder Lens mod. I'm, I'm trying it out. I'm giving it a go. Um, so we would really like to get the Great Library if we could. The Great li Library has similar uh, benefits as the Apadana, except that it is a science wonder as well. It has two great work slots on it. If I, actually, I can show you that, right? The Great Library has two great works of writing slots. It gives you great writer's points. It gives you great scientist points, plus science, all the Eurekas, just quite valuable. Um, I'm going to put this immortal to this tile and then convert. And now we've ended up with net positive value. And then we're going to raid this clan and end up with even more net positive value. And we still have a, a charge here to convert units. Like, could you get could you get more value? Honestly, let's raid the clan and send this scout on an auto explore mission. Let's settle on the oranges. The city is now one, two, three. It's still in range of the government plaza if we want to make use of it. Zhao Dong, you don't actually have very good tiles to improve. So I think we're going to go for the granary monument opener, probably the watermill opener. 
the Granary Monument Watermill opener. No, Watermill is the best tempo. Granary is the best, second best tempo. And then Monument is really good tempo. So essentially, the tempo is just like how fast your build is. And tall builds have to be fast. Now, do keep in mind, this build is going to be worse than most games that we play. But I think we can clear this pretty safely. Can I get this kill? Come on. Yeah. All right. Nice one. The map is a little bit crammed, um, which I don't love at the moment. I could convert and get another Spearman and then clear that camp and just end up with tons of value. I think we will do that and we'll try to walk this guy home, probably heal him up a little. Essentially, I'm just trying to see if I can get a military for free. That's what I want from Chin's ability this game. If I have a big old scary military, people are less likely to declare war on me. I'm going to trade a zombie for an immortal. That feels like a net positive trade for me, uh, especially because the immortal still has a conversion charge. We did get our government plaza. We want the audience chamber ASAP, plus two amenities and plus four housing, uh, plus four housing uh, in for, for cities with governors. So the extra amenities is an important part of our strategy. Uh, something that I haven't properly actually played around right now is the fact that I want to get a Colosseum. So let me have a little bit of a think about where I'm going to build it and how I'm going to build it. I'm going to move this theater square down to this tile right here. I will put the entertainment complex here and the Colosseum right there. So Beijing will be building the Colosseum for me. The second that I have Magnus, I'll be putting him into the city and I'll be buying builders to do that. However, for now, I really need to get Researcher and I would like to get Grants too. That's quite important. We can get a plantation here for another amenity. And now we should be getting close to some of these cities being happy. Like they're at plus one amenity right now. Um, very close to plus three. If I could just purchase... Oh, we can purchase dies. Perfect. Um, so now officially three of my cities are now positive. Three amenities, which gives them 10% amenity boost, which means... That's again, right? Every every 10 turns they take, it's as if they took 11 turns in terms of yields. So again, that's tempo, right? My cities are moving faster than the average bear. Uh, we really need to get a builder in here. That's going to be probably a purchase for me. Let's sell off some more horses. Do I want to get a builder immediately? Where are we standing? We're going to skip out on that. We need to actually, you know what? We need a trader and specifically we would like an international trader. And I'm going to trade from the capital. I'll buy a trader and I'll look for a couple of cities that I might be able to hit with trade routes next turn. We're mostly looking for safe gold trade routes. So trading with England might be a good move, depending on how overrun by barb swarms they are. Bristol or Birmingham. Birmingham is plus one sign, so I'll take that trade route and it opens up this trade passage through here too. Uh, we have two envoys in the bank. Let's have a look at our envoy list. We're going to have a hard time doing envoy quests this game. We could train an archer. That's entirely possible. Trigger Eureka for archery. Really need to get a kill with a slinger then. And so again, let's get these guys on the move. Bring these slingers home to serve as defensive troops. Now, this might not stay as a tall build. It's a tall build for now. When we, if we see an opportunity to kill a neighbor in an easy war, we will absolutely do that. But this is beautiful. There's a huge number of troops down here that I could potentially convert. Um, this is gonna be massive value. Partially my, um, my motivation for doing the quote unquote tall build that we're doing right now was A, to test it out, but also B, to uh, be safe from the zombies because Trying to settle a whole bunch of cities against zombies can be get a little bit finicky and scary. I wonder if Eleanor would like an old friendship. Okay, no, she's going to declare war on me in a couple of turns. So I'll quickly get open borders with her and redirect how I want to fight her. Um, we'll upgrade you to an archer. That's important. That'll also get me an envoy, which is quite nice. I'd really like to get this campus, but I'm going to quickly get the water mill first because that plus one production will serve me well when I'm building the Colosseum and everything else in the game that I plan. Yeah, do not be surprised if Eleanor declares war on me in the next three to four turns. Horseback riding, excellent. We're working on apprenticeship. I would like to have two more mines. I have two quarries and one mine. So getting a builder would be superb for that. Buy ourselves a builder in the capital to keep that flow going. Potential barb conversions here. Could get a triple convert. It's entirely possible. So I need to step this immortal to here and to here. Now here's the thing. Can you convert boats with this ability? Because if you can convert boats, man, <laughs> that completely changes the game. If I'm able to convert boats, oh my god. I'll have the strongest military in the game without actually trying. Okay, so there's the war with Eleanor that we discussed. If an AI is showing friendly to you, but they're refusing to take an alliance, that means they're going to declare war on you. That's, that's how I knew that was going to happen. Uh, let's do this, move you there, move you there, move you here. If we can get this immortal onto this tile, we can get a huge convert. Step over here to the left and improve this pasture. This archer is in prime position. He also has the garrison promotion, so he should be able to easily defend our city. Um, and we should be able to look for a pretty decent trade route here. I'm going to trade with Singapore. I want to keep these trade routes relatively short where I can control um, tiles nearby. 
I'm going to chop this woods to finish the audience chamber. I'll quickly get myself the watermill to allow the city to continue to grow. Uh, and I need to find a way for this city to continue to grow. I think it would be really nice if I were able to get another couple of archers. Wuhan, get a granary, we need to grow. And I would really like to take Grant, but I have to take Magnus and put him into Beijing. We need to be careful about how much we chop. But a little bit of chopping is okay here. I'm going to steal this builder. Yoink, thanks for the free builder. And then I'll look to see if I can pillage this trading dome. Uh, let's do a double convert over here. Boing, boing. Thank you very much. Huge net positive value. Poor little spearman is getting wrecked down here. Um, I'm going to trade out this weakened warrior for a warrior and a spearman. Easy clap. It's, a, it's so much value, dude. I will trade this immortal for two warriors because they each have charges. And then I will trade this guy for two archers. Net positive trades, my dude. I kill that slinger easily. If they want to attack Wuhan, they have to like walk all the way around, which would be like a bit of an arduous journey for them. Could potentially clear that barb camp. At the very least, pillage it, but build another mine. We need one more mine. So I'm probably going to try to put a mine right here, at least for now. Probably not going to be where that mine will be long term. Warrior head there, you head this way. See if we can pillage this. Okay, step on there, get ready to clear that. And then what is this that we have? Archer, shoot him. You step there. Um, another plantation would suit as well. In the capital, that's more housing, more growth. We're taking a look at Jian. Could be good to build ancient walls. That would boost engineering. And we would also get an error score for doing a boost because we have free inquiries. That seems like a pretty good setup there. Let us convert the barbarians to archers on my side. And I still have a converter left. Now we have recorded history. What was I building here? I was quickly getting ancient walls before I started on the Great Library. I'll need a little bit more cash before I can do the Great Library, but that's just selling horses. That's all that is. And we can get to work on defensive tactics and games and recreation, all that sort of jazz. Magnus, I don't think I need a promotion on. It would be nice to get Liang in Wuhan to be able to take zoning commissioner and reinforce materials to protect it from that volcano. So I'll do that. Liang in Wuhan, plus the housing and amenities. My capital is plus five amenities, meaning it's getting 20% more production. 20% is huge. Now, unfortunately, I don't have access to coast, so I won't be able to build Kilwa Kisawani this game, but that, that is just like one of those occurrences that happens. You, you just, you don't hit every possible note. Now, do I trade a warrior for 122 gold? I think I do. He could potentially die here, but I'm willing to accept his death because the potential capability of me to pillage these camps and gain more gold to buy other units. Like, for example, I can buy a swordsman up here. Boom. And uh, now I have a swordsman with a conversion charge, which was kind of the build that I was hoping to pull off. But I just actually didn't find enough barb camps early. And I got kind of boxed in and forced it to this tall build. So a little bit of a wonky early game, but it is working out to be an interesting game. All right, so a spearman appeared. Let's kill him. And I totally forgot to switch to Classic Republic. So I'm going to miss out on some amenities here this game, which is really unfortunate. These sorts of mistakes do add up in my game. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I forget. Let's put that mine down. Boom. Apprenticeship boosted. So we'll have plus one production on our mines in a turn. I'm going to make sure we kill a warrior. And with these walls up, our city will be impenetrable. Our science is doing okay. We need to find out where we're putting our campuses over in these cities. There is a pretty good plus two on that mine that I just built. I would rather put my plus two here. So your campus is next. And then Zhao Dong, where is your campus going? I guess we can put your campus on this tile. So we have a little we have a little bit of rearranging, a little bit of stuff to do. I could pillage this trade route for another 80 gold. Lovely. Uh, let's go ahead and raid this clan. I Thankfully, I managed to spawn a bunch of barbs over here, which means I will have people to send my barbs to go claim. I did lose my warrior up in that English city, but that was kind of intentional. Um, I was trading him out for gold. Um, we're continuing to get invaded. As long as I hit this unit hard enough, he should be forced to retreat. And I'm also getting walls next turn, which will allow me to do even more damage to these guys. So I don't feel scared at all. We do have a little zombie. Let's convert the zombie, raid the clan. I'm always happy to convert a zombie because it's a net neutral trade in terms of like units. So there's apprenticeship, first technology from a new era. Engineering is advanced and we have our wall. So we should now be able to start trimming down her military. And we can also get started on the great library by buying this tile. Skadoosh, down goes the great library. We would really like to build a theater square. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I place that theater square there. But we really need to get the Great Library. Now, the value that the Great Library represents is the plus two science per turn is quite nice. The plus one great scientist point, the plus one great writer point. All of these will get doubled by Pingala's ability later. Every time someone else earns a great scientist, we'll get a boost of science. And it will also provide us with great work of writing slots. So when we do try to maximize our culture from these cities and we start trying to pump out great works of writing, we will have tons of room for them. Uh, so the next step is we need to start thinking about how we're going to get to our university. Our plan is a science victory, by the way. 
um, in general. But I think the opening of a tall build has actually happened. And when you consider the situation, the fact that I'm only, you know, 30 sides behind them, 40 culture behind these guys, you know, I'd say I'm, I'm kind of like I'm middle of the pack right now, I would say. Despite the fact that uh, normally I would have to have like four or five times this number of cities to be on par with the AI. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. I wish I had found Hypatia. Bye bye.